Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Walker. Tell you what, what a ball of energy this man is. I tell you, if I can achieve just half that, I would be very proud. So, but thank you for uh, all the uh, for this opportunity. And uh, Mayor Yarborough, thank you for being here today. It's always an honor and a privilege to, to be present with the, uh, uh, the leadership here in Maywood and, and, the, uh, and, and the others as well. With that being said, also, uh, Mr. Lim, thank you for uh, coming and being here today. And uh, certainly, Colonel Retired Hidalgo, I'm looking forward to hearing your remarks. And certainly, Bill and Jean Harris there in the back, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I, I certainly am truly humbled and honored to be here today to pay tribute collectively uh, to these heroes of Bataan, those who gave so much and asked for nothing in return. And it's altogether fitting that we are here today on this 10th anniversary of the terror attacks of 9-11. Just as it was with Pearl Harbor, 9-11 pushed us into war and ultimately revealed the true metal of Americans and our allies. Before I begin, I, I must tell you that I feel completely unworthy to stand here today and speak to you. Before, to speak of the greatness of these men of Bataan, Americans and Filipinos certainly, what they did, how they endured is certainly beyond comprehension. And most certainly speaks to the ages. And to have the privilege to pay tribute to the soldiers of Company B, 192nd Tank Battalion, soldiers in direct lineage of the 33rd Infantry Brigade Combat Team, the unit that I have the pleasure and privilege to serve now, uh, it just gives me great pause. Company B, 192nd, these truly were Maywood's finest. Boys that went to school just down the street blocks from here at Proviso, they went in the National Guard. They drilled just down the street off of Madison years ago. These men who fought valiantly almost the, from the day they arrived in the Philippines, performing a masterful delaying action, along with the Filipino Army Infantry Divisions, the 11th, the 71st, and the Twilight Riders of the 26th Cavalry. Fighting from the Lugayan Gulf to the final reserve line in Southern Bataan, they performed a covering action that certainly prevented the Japanese from capturing Australia and changing the course of the war. And the mistreatment that followed the death march, years of in unthinkable brutality in prison camps like Cabanatuan, and, and, that's, and then forced into slave labor in Japan, and that's only if they survived the hellship experience. Those who survived returned home suffering from the debilitating effects of their war years, no American, no Filipino can ever and must never forget. The vets of Bataan are, are old now. Albert Brown, the oldest uh, survivor of the death march, died just weeks ago. It's just a handful are left from B Company, 192nd. Our boys who left for the Philippines October 1941, really just boys, and gave their future to preserve our way of life. Quite clearly, we Americans owe our success as a nation to the freedom brought and wrought by these men, and really to all men and women who have heeded the battle call and served this nation in her time of need. Just as it was for the greatest generation, today's soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines are the centerpiece of our military. They are key to our success in every mission we undertake. It is they that understand that if we desire peace, we must prepare for war. And when in war, they bring commitment to create a better world. To accomplish this end, we bring the fight to the enemy. And we know that because behind our flag is resolute purpose. For it is not our military that goes to war, it is our country that does. We as a nation have been at war continuously now for 10 years. Since the terror attacks of 9-11, we've been fighting an Islamic extremist network led by Al-Qaeda and, and, uh, and supported by a host of transnational actors. Acts of terrorism are acts of war, which must always be countered by deliberate and persistent military response. That's what we in the military do. 
That's what we do in the 33rd Infantry Brigade Combat Team. That's what the 192nd Tank Battalion did in Bataan. But that persistent military response comes at a high price in both blood and treasure. No one knows this better than the men and women whose boots are on the ground right now fighting the long war. We have lost more than 6,220 men and women, 232 from Illinois and 18 from my brigade. The cost is, is high, very high. And while the public may take note by flags held at half mast, his brothers in arms now see an empty seat at the mess hall are now a man short on their gun truck, or they're short on their fire team, and all are certainly challenged by his ever-present spirit for years to come. Just as it, as it was in Bataan, this reality of war is not new. It just is. The nature of war never changes. The best news I think I received in the last 10 years is, was a call I received from my son on May 1st this year. He called me up and he said, Dad, did you hear the news? We got him. Osama bin Laden's been killed. And as I watched the television coverage and I spoke to my children and I heard in their voices, it had dawned on me that for most of their lives they've been living under a dark shadow cast by this mass murderer. This killer modeled after the likes of Hitler and Stalin. And I saw the relief in their eyes and I immediately gave thanks, immediately gave thanks to all those that have fallen in this fight. So much can be said about a country, our country, that will always persevere, ensuring good prevails. It was not a pacifist rhetoric that got Osama bin Laden, it was SEAL Team 6. We must continue to look ahead and we must continue to be resolute. Of course, we cannot be absolutely certain of what the future will look like, but we do know it will be exceedingly complex and it will be unpredictable. We also know that evil exists in this world. That's not gonna change. And we also know that Americans and our allies must always fight evil. Religious extremists, ethnic disputes, religious rivalries, weapons of mass destruction, human disaster, all remain clear and present danger. And that our military forces must respond. As General Casey, retired former chief, he said it will be an era of persistent conflict. He couldn't have been more correct. We also know that our enemies, whatever shape or form they may come in, will be armed, they'll be trained, they'll be equipped, and they will be very inspired. And yes, they'll want to win, but we will not let them. We will prevail because we are the best trained, best equipped, best led, the mightiest army, the mightiest military in the land. That I can assure you, and that will never change. But it's not our technology, it's not our equipment, it's not our training, that makes us the mightiest military on the planet. It's our people. It's those people in formations all around the world. People in the armed forces in a uniform. Corporals, sergeants, team leaders, squad leaders, company commanders, command sergeants, majors. Those, those men and women that do the heavy lifting day in and day out right now, it's happening. In Afghanistan and Iraq, I saw it firsthand. I saw it at the individual level where the foundation for our success, success is ethical and moral leaders who are smart, able to resolve complex problems on an unpredictable battlefield. Truth be told, we participate in the very same struggle that's been passed down by our forefathers to defend freedom, to protect our liberty, and to secure our nation's vital interests. It's certainly a calling that is natural for those people who work at the risk of their own life. People who are set apart by a shared sacrifice, a shared service, and a shared willingness to serve our great nation. Many of you are in this audience right now. Many of you will be. 
I think all of us here today know that the men and women in our armed forces are in the arena, have always been in the arena, whether it be a field in Concord, Massachusetts, a beach in Normandy, and inside a turret of an M3 Jeb Stuart tank in Luzon, a patch of airspace over Korea, a jungle in Vietnam, a dirty side street in Baghdad, or today on the side of a mountain in Konar province. From well before the planning or framing of our Constitution to right now in more than 125 countries across the globe, each selflessly put themselves on the line defending freedom. And should war rob them of their future, we will remember them. That's why we're here this afternoon in Maywood. To remember those lost in Bataan, and to those that fell after 9-11, we will never forget. May God bless America.